Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's, since we're talking about uh, questions of affordability, uh, let, let's stay in that realm, but uh, talk about something my Republican friends did not support, um, the American Rescue Plan, which I'm proud to have voted for and provided a historic increase to the child tax credit by boosting the credit to $3,600 for infants and toddlers and $3,000 for children uh, and paying those credits on a monthly basis, child poverty decreased by 30% in 2021. In the same year, food insecurity decreased by 24%, the equivalent of 2 million fewer children going hungry. For parents, the CTC helped pay for baby formula, child care, and so many other things. Unfortunately, this critical lifeline ended for hardworking families across the nation at the end of 2021. Secretary Yellen, is it your opinion that the American Rescue Plan enhanced child tax credit is the reason for decrease in child poverty in 2021? I believe uh, that a st recent study showed that about a half of the decrease in child poverty was directly attributable to the child tax credit, and there were other things that um, also served to lower child and poverty. And how many more children would be lifted out of poverty if the Bipartisan Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act was signed into law? Uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but certainly additional well, children would be. Based they upon what we saw previously, and looking at what the credit is uh, devised uh, in that legislation, uh, to me it is a proven track record uh, of delivering brighter future for our children. And I want to thank the chairman for his continued work on this issue. I hope we can pass this legislation shortly. Uh, climate change is causing the property and casualty insurance market to buckle under competing pressures to provide returns for shareholders and sell a product that policyholders can afford. As businesses, insurers have an obligation, obviously, to their shareholders to make a profit. But as policymakers, we have a right to be concerned when families can't afford or access necessary homeowners insurance coverage. All state and state farm have stopped writing new policies in California. 15 other companies have stopped writing new policies in Florida. Insurance giant AIG plans to reduce their homeowners insurance business in communities across the United States, New York, Delaware, Florida, Colorado, Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. 12% of homeowners have chosen to forego home insurance. So, Madam Secretary, can you discuss, as noted in the report, how climate risk drives a negative feedback loop to economic and financial stability? Well, we're very concerned um, about the developments that you just cited. And, um, of course, th the absence of insurance or being priced out of insurance as these climate risks have intensified is harming um, the well-being of households and um, the cost of living. And it's also creating risk to financial stability because um, many banks have exposure um, through loans to the risks that can come if there are uninsured losses. And so uh, there can be a feedback loop um, that works to disadvantage. Between wildfires, droughts, flooding across the country, for those who are deniers, uh, you can see it before your eyes. If you have no insurance, then you put for most American families is the biggest single uh, asset at risk uh, at the end of the day. And finally, the FSOC uh, report made some mention of the housing shortage when discussing vulnerabilities in the residential real estate market. But I worry that not enough emphasis is being placed on this crisis. Nationwide, we're facing a shortage of 3.2 million homes. This shortage is driving up the price of housing and placing vulnerable Americans such as seniors and those with lower incomes at risk. Do you agree that the housing shortage, if not addressed, could pose a serious threat to the economy? And if so, what do you think that Congress could do to help alleviate that circumstance? Well, I certainly agree that this is an enormous problem for a very large number of Americans. Um, President Biden has made a number of different proposals to attempt to um, address this um, that Congress hasn't uh, passed. And I do think it's an area that requires um, very close attention and action by Congress to um, address. 
Well, choice neighborhoods, Section 202 housing for the elderly, and a whole host of other things. And the public housing fund is facing a 70 billion capital needs backlog. And the Section 202 program hasn't kept with the rising need for affordable senior housing. So I know the committee has jurisdiction over that. I appreciate the chairman has given housing more attention under his leadership. I hope we can continue to do so. Thanks, Senator Scott of South Carolina.